Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam. Welcome back to another episode of Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch every night, I'm gonna tell you about 10 severely underrated yet totally badass movies you can catch for free on Tubi and other streaming services. And because I know some of you are gonna be unusually disappointed with my number one pick this episode, I've included 11 movies in this top 10 list, plus five additional honorable mentions. Thanks to Fume for sponsoring this video. We'll talk more about them in a bit, but my number 11 pick is Underwater, starring Kristen Stewart. Now, this one came out to mixed reviews, and I can understand why some people were disappointed with this movie. Just by looking at the footage here, you can see why some people would make comparisons to really great movies like Alien, and that's where you're gonna get disappointed. This is not really that type of movie. This is a PG-13 horror movie with plenty of jump scares and monsters and all sorts of stuff to give you the willies, but it takes place in this deep sea research facility. In fact, Underwater has a lot more in common with movies like The Poseidon Adventure than it does with Alien. So when you look at it that way, it's kind of an awesome Poseidon Adventure type movie, but there's also monsters in the mix. It's one I think you can have a lot of fun with, again, with the right expectations. Now, like I said, these movies are all available on Tubi here in the US, but they're also gonna be available on other streaming services if you don't care to watch these movies for free with commercials. There's a good chance some of the titles are gonna be on another streaming service you have access to. So always check the top pinned comment in my videos for a comprehensive list. I also include where you can stream these titles in Canada, UK, and Australia because most of them are not gonna be on Tubi there right now. Next up, we've got one that actually got pretty good reviews back when it came out, but I feel like time has already forgotten it, mainly because it had a sequel that was kind of ho-hum, but still, the original Don't Breathe is a really intense thriller. You wouldn't quite call this a horror movie, but man, is it laced with horror elements. In fact, it can be pretty disturbing at times, surprisingly so meaning there's some stuff that could catch you off guard in this movie and it's 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 off-putting to say the least but you follow some young bandits breaking into what they believe is an abandoned house but of course it's not empty it is occupied by a ruthless blind man played by legendary actor Stephen Lang who basically Kevin McAllister's his whole house the kids can't see what's going on and there's a lot of surprises in this movie but again this one's gonna disgust most of you. Don't Say a Word is kind of a long forgotten thriller. It was kind of big news back when it came out, but that was mainly because Michael Douglas was in a bunch of great thrillers back then, but also because of Brittany Murphy's creepy performance in this movie. She's so good in it. It's one of my favorite roles she ever did. Not the best movie she's in, but certainly one of the like stronger roles that she got. As you can imagine, it's packed with twists. A little bit dated today, but still a fun watch, especially if you don't really remember what's going on. This one's got a lot of mystery to it. Speaking of things you're not allowed to speak about, um, some of us have some bad habits, and one of them is bad enough that we're not actually allowed to discuss it on YouTube. I can't even bring it up, but today's sponsor, Fume, can help you with that. And that's because Fume looks at bad habits in a different way. Not every part of a bad habit is bad. So instead of dramatic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad part of your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is all natural. Instead of vapor, Fume is just using flavored air. And instead of harmful chemical, Fume's only using natural flavors. And that's just it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It removes the bad part of your habit, allowing you to retain part of it without worrying about inhaling anything harmful into your body. It's also a really nice product. The outside is wood, it's comfortable in your hands, and they worked in multiple little fidgety elements that will also kind of help you take the edge off of that habit. And there's a ton of flavors available and they're all interesting. For instance, we got sparkling grape, orange vanilla, white cranberry, and raspberry lemon. And that's what the flavor cartridge looks like. They're tiny, they're different colors based on the different flavors. You just stick it right in there, it pops right in, this goes over the top and you're done. That's how easy it is to load. 
again, nothing. There's no vapor, nothing. And you'd be amazed at how much flavor you actually get off of this. So why not break up with your bad habit by picking up the Journey Pack today? For a limited time, my viewers will save 10% when they go to tryfume.com slash flick. You can also use this QR code or type in my code flick when you go to tryfume. That's tryfum.com slash flick. Flick. Again, you're going to get 10% off. It's a great deal, especially if you've got a habit you need to break. But speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. Now, Nicolas Cage makes maybe 10 movies a year. Probably not that many. It's probably half that. But he averages about one solid flick per year out of that high number. And in 2013, his best film was easily Joe. Believe it or not, this is from director David Gordon Green, the same director of Pineapple Express and Your Highness. But Joe is a far cry from either of those movies. This also stars Ty Sheridan and has a lot in common with another film of his I love, Mud, starring Matthew McConaughey. Theme-wise, both movies share a lot in common and you get a fantastic performance from Nicolas Cage that is fairly straightforward. Don't get me wrong, I love wild and zany Nicolas Cage performances, but he chooses to do subtle performances occasionally. Pig was probably his most recent subtle performance, and Joe, I think, is every bit as good. Now, my next one's way over the top, but I think just does not get the love that it deserves. Wanted. This one gets just major points for being just visually stunning from beginning to end and for showing me stuff I've never seen in a movie before. Matrix level stuff in a movie that is definitely sillier than a Matrix movie, or, but hell, it's way better than the newest one. Not only is Angelina Jolie smoking hot, but James McAvoy was a total badass in this movie. You've also got Chris Pratt who's only in the movie a little bit, but he's really funny in it. This is well before he was a big star. And I mean, the action sequences are just completely unhinged in this movie. Yes, I know you can't really make bullets curve like that. This is a fantasy movie, but for someone who loves action movies as much as I do, this is a really cool fantasy movie. Now my next pick, I think was just underrated mainly because of who directed it. I think just critics in Hollywood are never gonna give him love again for obvious reasons, but nevertheless, Mel Gibson is one hell of a director and he directed one hell of a film with Hacksaw Ridge. Not only did he direct it well, but Andrew Garfield just gives an amazing performance in this movie. He really is one of the stronger actors working today. I think he's got Joaquin Phoenix level abilities and I think we've yet to see him really fully tap into those. Give him another 10 years and I think we'll be blown away by what he can do, and this movie is a good example of it. Not only is he great, Vince Vaughn is exceptional in this film. In fact, the entire cast is great. Now, there are a lot of battle sequences that are brutal, but the overall theme here is wildly different. This is based on a true story. Andrew Garfield actually plays a man who was a conscientious objector to the war. He became a medic and refused to pick up a rifle, and it's an insanely harrowing story. The guy was anything but a wuss, and the story is just kind of unbelievable. And again, Gibson, he did a hell of a job with it. It would have been cool if my next pick got ranked next to Joe, but it didn't because I do think it's a little better than Hacksaw Ridge in the wildest way possible, Killer Joe. You ever hear of Joe Cooper? He's a cop, a detective actually. He's got a little business on the side. What you do? He kills people. Now this one does star Matthew McConaughey and it's one of his most wicked performances. Easily one of the most wicked performances a major actor like that has ever done uh, outside of maybe Joaquin Phoenix in Joker. And this was directed by the late William Friedkin, one of the greatest directors of all time. You're talking in The French Connection and The Exorcist. And while Killer Joe is far from his best work, who this is a... This is a wild movie. So the basic setup here is a couple of guys hire a hitman, played by Matthew McConaughey, and he entangles himself in their lives in some really twisted ways. This is based on a stage play, and when you get to the final sequence, it will feel much more like a play. In fact, I cannot imagine people sitting in a theatrical setting watching what unfolds in the last scene of this movie. Who would like to say grace? 
let's just say you'll never look at fried chicken the same way again. If that sounds like you, definitely check out Killer Joe. If you're easily disturbed, just trust me and stay far away from this movie, as well as my next pick, Slither, written and directed by James Gunn. Now this was James Gunn's first big Hollywood movie with a bunch of special effects and everything, and it still feels like a James Gunn movie. In fact, I'd put my favorite movies of his as Slither, The Suicide Squad, Super, and Guardians of the Galaxy in no particular order. This is an alien invasion movie oozing with practical effects. Now they do use some CGI, but it's a pretty good mix and you get a lot of slime in this movie. It's also pretty funny the way a James Gunn movie should be. You've got Elizabeth Banks, Nathan Fillon, Michael Rooker is a total animal in this movie. If you've loved some of the other James Gunn movies I mentioned, Slither fits in with them really well as kind of a fantastic horror movie. Have you ever seen anything like that? Me neither. I watch Animal Planet all the time. Now, before we get to my top three, I want to give you five honorable mentions, also on Tubi, also hardcore. Now, Rumble in the Bronx is one of my favorite Jackie Chan movies, or at least one of my favorite American Jackie Chan movies. It goes way over the top in the best way possible and features some of his best stunt work. Or at least a handful of the stunts in this movie are among some of his best, easily putting this movie in his top 10. I also think Zero Dark Thirty is an excellent movie that kind of came and went a little too fast. I realize the subject matter being so raw and real is a little bit much for multiple viewings, but this is also from director Catherine Bigelow, who was just coming off the success of The Hurt Locker, but she also directed bangers like Point Break and Strange Days, so she's got a really interesting filmography, a lot of action in it, and while Zero Dark Thirty is not necessarily packed with action, the entire experience feels incredibly real. Believe it or not, I'm putting striptease in the mix. Yes, striptease. This is a comedy that I think too few people appreciate. And Demi Moore is insanely hot in this movie and has multiple dance sequences that are just beyond breathtaking, but you could Google those if that's all you wanted to watch. The movie itself actually has quite a bit of comedy in it. Why are you all shiny? It's Vaseline. Oh, oh, it's, vas it's Vaseline. I can feel it squishing between my toes. All right, okay. It's one of Burt Reynolds' funniest roles, but you've also got Robert Patrick doing a really funny redneck character. And yeah, there's some mystery too, but it's not that intriguing. Once you know what's going on, it's not really worth the multiple viewings, but I'm telling you the comedy definitely is more so than you would think. Same goes for 30 minutes or less. I understand why this one's underrated. It's actually based on a true story. There's a Netflix documentary about it. And the true story is way more interesting than this movie, but the movie itself has got some great comedy actors in it, and they're all doing really funny stuff. Penny nuggets, penny nuggets, penny nuggets for the bank robbery. Cause we go in with our plastic guns and the cops will shoot us in our face. It's also worth noting that Tubi currently has the full John Wick trilogy. Now I didn't include that on this list, even though those movies are definitely some of the most badass things you can watch on Tubi. It didn't really fit into a list of underrated movies. But my last honorable mention, Keanu did. Now this is a 90 minute sketch from Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key, and it feels like a Key and Peele sketch. They fall in love with a little kitten who goes missing and they have to rescue him. Super basic setup, but Key and Peele always have a lot of fun with different movie genres, and in this movie, they have a lot of fun with action movie tropes, and it's hilarious for people who love action movies. I don't really recommend this as a movie, but as a 90 minute sketch, it's pretty fantastic, especially if if you love action movies like I do. All right, gotta break out the shades for my next one, John Carpenter's They Live. Now listen up, because I'm about to strongly recommend a cheesy movie. But this movie's not all camp. It's actually got quite a lot to say about the state of the world, or at least the potential state of the world. In this movie, famous wrestler Rowdy Roddy Piper actually plays a drifter who discovers these magic sunglasses, and when you put them on, you can see the world unveiled for what it really is, and it's a world run by evil alien overlords. Now that he can see the aliens and he knows what's up, the first thing he decides to do is pick up a gun, 
And this is not a shoot 'em up movie. Yes, he does shoot up some aliens, but there's a lot more going on. Like I said, it's got something to say, but it's also a wild adventure movie and it features an insanely long fight sequence between Roddy Piper and Keith David. In fact, that fight sequence in particular is so long and so over the top, they actually parodied it on South Park in like one of the first seasons. This is just a total classic from the 80s. It oozes an 80s vibe, and if you didn't pick up on it, this shirt is my They Live shirt. You can actually pick it up at DarrenVanDam.com slash shop. Not quite my favorite John Carpenter movie. I mean, the guy did Escape from New York, Halloween, and The Thing, but I'd put They Live right behind those three. Now in a list of hardcore movies, I've got quite a bit of action, but none quite like my next pick, Smoke and Aces. Not only does this movie have a stacked cast, I mean, Ryan Reynolds, Ray Liotta, Ben Affleck, Andy Garcia, Chris Pine, Taraji P. Henson, Joel Edgerton, and Jeremy Piven as Buddy Israel in one of his last, like, greatest movie roles. The setup is simple. A bunch of hitmen are trying to kill him all at once. And surprisingly, it's not as much of a shoot 'em up movie as you would expect. Again, plenty of shootouts, but there's also a lot of intrigue and mystery, a little bit of espionage stuff happening behind the scenes. A fair amount of comedy. I mean, Chris Pine in particular is absolutely hilarious in this movie and just a slick sense of style that just nothing else on this list has got. But speaking of cool movies, I went with not only one of the coolest movies of all time for my number one pick, it also features just one of the greatest badasses of all time, Paul Newman. Yes, I happen to think Paul Newman is a real badass in Cool Hand Luke. Obviously not in the traditional sense. This has been a long time favorite of mine. It's one I can watch almost any time. I enjoy practically every single scene out of this movie. Completely out of context, I think most of the scenes work really well. It's also beautifully shot. I mean, the cinematography in this movie is incredible, especially considering you're spending most of it in this tiny, cramped little jailhouse. You know, there's not a big color palette, there's not big scenery or anything. You're mostly on a dirt road and a jailhouse, and it somehow ends up being this just incredible film with a bunch of great performances, but also some really entertaining sequences, like the boxing sequence and obviously the egg sequence. And then it's got a lot of heavy stuff, but it's also one you could watch with younger kids. It's just, it's a nice, well-rounded movie. I wanted to pop here on number one, but since I know some of you would have been disappointed, hopefully I loaded the rest of this video up pretty well for you. Thanks again to Fume for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to go check out their link in the description. But. I will keep making these videos as long as y'all keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Tubi episode, and you will see me on the next one.